Hey guys, thanks for following along. Usually I'm building aircraft, this time we're building a wild pool. It sits on the top floor of a house, 24 feet deep in the water. A floor moves up and down in the pool and literally can come out of the water to turn it into a dance floor or just a couple feet deep if I got little kids in the pool. We're gonna show you how we do some quick connects, scuba diving connects for it. We have windows that see through into the pool. We got some crazy engineering with concrete that spans clear out over the backyard sitting on a single column. The pool actually sits over a garage. So we're gonna show you how we engineer so cars can drive under the pool. There's a lot of crazy things we got to do. Big craning, big rebar, big construction, and a ton of engineering. I hope you follow along. There's lots of little tricks we gotta do along the way. This is in Utah. It's gonna be able to freeze. And so I need this system to auto winterize. So I'm gonna show you some big underground water vaults that drain all the pipes every time a pump turns off, either from me or from a power outage so that this pool can be run 365 days a year. We're doing radiant floor heating, all kinds of fun things, some waterfalls, wet walls. Follow along, I hope you like this. You know, I love engineering, I hope you like this. As soon as we get this house done, we're gonna get back to building a few airplanes. I'm actually building airplanes while building the house, so I hope you follow along all of it. Catch up on the old stuff, follow the new. We love you guys, back to work. It's physics, math, and engineering. Machine it, draft it, build it, test it, break it. Every time something new gets built, the entire world advances. Laying in bed at night, it's designing new parts, designing new suspension, designing new wings. All right, guys, we're in one of the storage rooms under our garage. I'm super excited about it. We've got storage rooms for all the kids their stuff even when they move out we'll have a spot that they can have their stuff in and if they need more space than that they can move out to a storage unit because it's not going to clutter our home so anyway this is one of the storage rooms right now i gotta install this this is a unlikely item we'll probably never use it's a sub a drain that's going to take groundwater i got a perf pipe that'll loop around we've got them throughout the house if the groundwater ever raises past the last 100 year flood marks, which it would have to go to the 100 year flood mark plus several feet more. So likelihoods we'll never use it, but I'm putting it in anyway. Right now I'm digging in the nearly four feet of engineered field base we put in that we compacted up in tiny lifts to build the entire house on so that none of the house or our swimming pool that's up three stories from here could ever move. I didn't want any part of the house moving because of dirt or soil. So we went down to bedrock a ways below water table and then work back up out of the water with this. What's amazing is the first time I've had to dig in it. If you look at what this bottom looks like, it was actually this rock, but as you come up and you keep compacting, it crushes and breaks and then keeps getting thicker and thicker. By the time we get to here, it's like concrete. We're literally picking at it. So um, I knew this house wasn't going anywhere, but now that I'm digging in our compacted base, I have zero concerns if I did in the first place. So I'm gonna get this set in this hole. And then you can see all of our footings. This is one of our smaller footings. It's only 20 inches thick, which typically they're eight to 12. And then some of the bigger ones are over two feet and almost three feet. Um, so we got huge footings on here. I'm gonna get this set, run a pipe out of it, run perf pipe through here, bring up the gravel all the way to here and then pour the concrete up here to a six inch thick con concrete floor all over the base. There'll be a submersible pump in here if the water table ever rises anywhere in the house. I got drains throughout the whole house. They'll come up, dump into buckets like this. There'll be a pump with a float. The float will take it, pitch it overboard and run it to a storm drain. So uh, the likelihood of us actually using this and getting the water table above the 100 year plane safety zone and several feet beyond that is virtually impossible, but I'd rather be safe than sorry and have these backup submersible pumps taking any water that might try and work its way up. So they'll probably just sit empty and collect dust, but I'll sleep better at night. So you guys know the drill. I gotta fill this up with gravel, fill this room with gravel, pour concrete, back to work. It's a big day, another 75 yards. It's a small port for this job. I think we've got 450 yards so far. Right now, we're getting ready to pour the concrete. You can see it's about 
seven inches thick, six, seven inches thick right here. I'm wetting this down because pouring concrete on concrete, the lower concrete that's already down will suck all the moisture out of the concrete we're putting on top of it. And normally you don't pour concrete on concrete, but I'm making it extra thick. And on this situation, I have to pour concrete on concrete because on this house, everything under the pool is a solid footing. It's, I'm literally pouring concrete on my footing, which is normal, but it's usually just the edge of a foundation wall. You see a little concrete. This footing on this house is solid, everything under the pool. So I'm getting it wet. The pump truck's up there. If you spin around and look, you can see it hanging. As soon as the concrete truck shows up, fill every room, all the basements, all our storage. This is the part of the pool equipment room. This wall and these pipes are all plumbed into two giant water tanks. They're the overflow tanks to keep the swimming pool and the hot tub exactly level. Whether you put five people in or 20 people, it will never move. Cannonball! And it's constantly pulling water and pushing it back. So when people get out of the pool, the pool will also stay the same level. It will refill it as fast as you climb out of it. So the overflow, rather than the pool going up and down with people, all of that movement is done in this tank, and there's a divider wall, and then the hot tub tank. So we got two tanks here. So we're all plumbed, ready to bury these pipes in concrete. I'm super excited. I love concrete day. About to work. This isn't completely necessary, but I just wouldn't feel comfortable not doing it. Um, this wall right here, we're gonna backfill. It is a really thick wall. Most of the walls on this house are 12 inches thick, double mat bar. This is a 10 inch single mat, so it's not quite as thick. Standard is eight. Um, but I'm not just gonna push dirt against it. A lot of homes, they just push the dirt in gently and let it sit and then water settle it. The problem is four or five years later, the concrete paths all around it or the driveway or the front porch stairs, they all settle and sink into that. I wanna get this to near 100% plus compaction. I've put this bracing and it may not look like much, but this board is a structural board. It is a compression load when I push on that backside. This is just bracing the wall so that I can go ahead and put down lifts and then compact in really heavy, large compactor bring it up and lifts all the way to the top, even though I don't have the lid on yet. I need to do that to finish some plumbing on the outside, even some major plumbing for the drain and overflow system for the pool. So I wanna get the outside filled and then finish connecting plumbing, then we'll pop the lid on this. This is just a compression load, but I have to brace the middle. We put enough pressure on the outside, this board would bow out or down. If you can just stabilize it, which doesn't take much, and keep the compression load pushing direct and you don't let it start to get a bending moment, then it can hold an unbelievable amount of weight. So I'm anchored top, bottom, middle. We'll backfill this. The rest of the house has so many 90 degree turns. This is the only wall that was long enough. I was worried about it. The rest is solid. So simple, quick, back to work.
so what we're doing right here, we just got the house backfilled, which I'm really excited about. It's a huge moment to be able to walk up. This right here from this point goes down about 16 feet from this window ledge. This window is pocketed with a two inch setback for a big two inch thick Lexan window that goes in here. So you can see into the swimming pool. And then right down here, you can see this little white layer. It's an exterior um, foam designed to put against the foundation. A lot of times people just put the foam alone and, and backfill against it. It works okay. Uh, I, it's better than no insulation, which is more common than not. People don't do any. Uh, I did want to put a good insulation barrier between this earth and the pool since it's going deep. A lot of pools, matter of fact, most pools do not have any insulation at all. They just dig a hole, rebar and concrete or gunite right to the soil. I think that's great. Most people only use their pools in the summer. I am designing this pool to be 24 seven, 365 in the middle of winter. So I'm setting the boilers to run it in the middle of winter and I wanna make sure I'm not spending a lot on gas. So even this right here going all the way down, what I did is I put the foam board in as the barrier stop. But what works really nice is just a piece of concrete board over top of it to nail it to the wall. But it also keeps the bigger rocks from kind of pushing against the foam and squishing it and losing part of the R value when you backfill it. So that concrete board just makes sure you keep all of that R value and you don't crush the foam. So at this point, I'll put a thinner insulation barrier where I pour a concrete slab going all the way around the outside of this lower part of the pool. Uh, I need to be thin because I need to keep the rebar tight between this wall and this concrete floor. You don't want to span that bar out. So it's just going to be standard concrete expansion board. It's really thin. That will carry up and act as a baby insulator on this slab. And then going up from here, I'm going to go much thicker insulation What's in the ground, once you get below frost level into standard temperature that is there all year is around 65 degrees temperature. The pool's gonna be, depending on the time of year, 90. And in the winter, we may make it like 104 the whole pool, just for fun, because we did that at a, at a pool party at one of our homes in the past. And the cool steam coming off of it for the party was a blast. So we turned the pool into a hot tub, but I will go thick up here. But on the lower area, 65 degree ground temp is trying to transfer to the water temp that's much warmer. And all I wanna do is break that connection. Since concrete has a thermal R value of near zero, temperature goes right through it. It's a near solid mass. And the more solid it is, the more quick it will transfer, the more air you have, the less. So I just wanted to make sure that the soil, which has a horrible R value, especially if it's a wetted clay, will transfer energy quick, concrete and soil, trade energy almost instantaneously. That little teeny white piece of foam is gonna save me a fortune in the winter, save me also all year round from the ground, sucking my heat out of my pool. So we'll go much higher going up, but if you want, go ahead and take a look inside. It's a big giant mess. All right, so this is down in the basement. This is currently our echo chamber, but that is the movie theater that is under half of the garage. So we've got the framing up top. Of course, that's just two by six. And if I just poured concrete on top of that, it's 14 inches thick, the concrete slab. That would explode and just come in. So right now it's got the floor down. So I put a waterproofing membrane on top then pour the concrete on it. Underneath here, we have to do a big steel substructure that's temporary and shore the whole lid up. Once we pour concrete, pull the steels out from underneath it, then the concrete above becomes the structure. We'll have lag bolts that go into these two by sixes every four feet, go up into the concrete, and then the concrete itself holds the two by sixes up, and that just becomes the framing for the sheetrock, electrical, and light. So. Getting closer, back to work. All right, guys, I'm putting down a tar-based rubberized coating over top of this wood deck. I've got the first coat done on a quarter of it. This is the concrete 
floor will go on top of this for the garage. So all this is garage. Everywhere you see the rebar sticking up actually gets folded over. So it's one big area. And then I'll roll it up the wall to the pool area. And on this area of the pool, you actually drive the vehicles under the pool. The pool will go to the right another roughly 40 to 50 feet this way. And then that's the deep high side that steps the shallow working that way. Anyway, a lot more to do. You guys know the drill. Let's get back to work. <laughs> All right, guys, so here's where we're at on the house build, which I'm really excited about because I can finally walk around on the floor of the garage. This right now, I just framed out a two by six. I went ahead and framed it like a regular house floor, but it is small timber, two by six, joist hangers, sheeted it. Then I put down two very thick layers of a rubberized tar substance over it. And usually you just pour concrete over top of that. I wanted to give a little more protection while the guys are laying rebar down. So I went ahead and then put a, put a added additional layer of waterproofing, which is this roofing membrane down. And then after we're done rebarring it, I'll go through and I'll tar over this again. Everything you see in black here is the garage. This looks like these go up to upper walls. They do not. They all fold over into the slabs. So the slab is actually spanning from this concrete wall to that one, to that one, to that one. But when we bend all the bar over and pour this, you won't see any of that bar. It's just a large garage. So it's a couple cars deep in that area. This area, maybe a car and a razor, not quite two cars deep. Uh, and then of course you can see the pool. I'm really excited about. Um, that is the deep end. This ledge right here you see is where the pool goes 50 feet that direction. That's the shallow end of the pool. So if you can imagine that top side up there where the pool wall depth is 27 feet, this side of the pool is about seven feet deep and then it slopes up to about three and a half feet deep where we have the hot tub and then a raised kind of splash pad for kids. So, um, and then of course the bottom of the pool that's 12 feet below what you can't see right now into the ground, that will raise and lower clear up to the top. And I had a way to do it so that the floor, I can not only just raise it and make the pool shallow, but I can now raise it and take it all the way up and turn it into like a dance floor. So I can pull it up out of the water and lose that section of the pool and use it for uh, more space for a party or a gathering or a wedding. If any of my kids will ever get hitched up, <laughs> give me some grandkids. <laughs> That's the idea. we got a lot of work to do. That's a whole lot of talking. We're down to three quarters of the first mat of number six bar, nine inches on center, is down. And we're going to come up a foot above that and put another mat of number five bar, nine inches on center. And then we'll be ready to pour our 14 inch thick concrete floor for the garage. All right, guys, we're about done with this video. I appreciate those of you who are following on. You've had a lot of great, fun comments. Um, regarding this crazy pool build. We have a lot more cool things to come along with the engineering on this pool. Some of the things we've already talked about, the pool going all the way down 24 feet, coming up and out of the water. There's a lot of neat features we need to do to make that safe. We'll go into future videos. That has to do with how the, the bottom of that platform will extend so that no one can sneak under it when it comes out of the water. We don't want anyone to get trapped underneath it. There's also some cool features with the pool. This pool is designed for 365 days a year in the middle of winter, which means this pool needs to automatically self-winterize if we had a power outage in 10 below zero. So we're gonna dive in where all that water goes, how it self-drains, underground vaults, in basement vaults. There's a lot of neat engineering to make this pool safe 365 days a year when it's clear up in the air at 10 below zero. So. 
Uh, those of you who follow along for the aircraft builds, I am working on the aircraft. I am dividing my time between the companies I run, the pool, and the airplanes, but I'm having a lot of fun. I appreciate you following along. I promise you, we're gonna get back to aircraft builds soon. We are working on a couple projects. So we'll get some time, put those videos together. I hope you guys have liked this. I'm having a lot of fun sharing with you. I love all your comments. Appreciate you guys. I got a lot to do, so back to work. <laughs>